have it on, on my mic. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Oshun Bumi Fernandez West. I'm the CEO of Odunde. I'm here with my board chair, Stan Strader. We're so excited that you're joining us, that you are joining us uh, this afternoon for the Odunde 365 African Business Roundtable. We have a plethora of information, a plethora of powerful people, and we can't wait for you to enjoy. I'm going to show a quick video from our sponsor, AARP. I thank them for sponsoring the sponsoring this AARP Pennsylvania. And I'm so excited you are here today for our program. At AARP, we are committed to advocating for and developing programs that increase financial resilience for the 50 plus community. And for many, that includes entrepreneurship. Many entrepreneurs and small business owners are using skills developed during early careers to start successful businesses, all while enjoying the experiences that come with working for themselves. There's an empowerment to leading your own business, charting your own course, and walking in your own truth. At AARP, we're here to help you on your journey. AARP offers free, accessible, comprehensive resources for aspiring entrepreneurs. We collaborate with local economic development organizations to host workshops and provide hands-on assistance, coaching, and mentorship to meet the needs of diverse populations in their own communities. To learn more about AARP, and how we support aspiring entrepreneurs, visit workforyourself.aarpfoundation.org. In the meantime, enjoy today's program. Thank you so much to, WA, to AARP for being a sponsor of the Odunde African Business Roundtable. We're now going to hear from retired councilwoman Jamie Blackwell. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, well, councilwoman. Oh, it is certainly a pleasure to be with you, the lovely, inimitable uh, Boomi Oshun, Boomi, and uh, certainly your board chair, Stan Strader, my brother. And uh, we want to say congratulations on this 46th anniversary. Yes. I am sure that your mother is looking down, being so proud of all you've done, that you stuck to the goals, to the challenges. Yes. You've met every problem with success and that you've been a blessing some to our city. In spite of somehow when the fights come, you've been able to overcome them. So I want to thank you, congratulate Stan and the entire board, and say how happy we are. I'm representing the Mayor's Commission on African and Caribbean Immigrant Affairs as well. And uh, we are just proud, happy to be here, want to say welcome to all, these, all those who are participating and to all the workshops. My goodness, Yuma Bob, President of Echoes of Africa, and so many others it's so interesting and i don't know how you managed to get it all done uh, some alive uh, some virtual as we are it's just a blessing to us all i say thank you congratulations odunde odunde <laughs> thank you councilman blackwell thank you we are now going to have a comment from the city of philadelphia director of commerce mr michael rashid Mr. Rakoshi, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Well, hello, Boomi. How are you today? Hi, Mr. Michael Rashi. How are you? All right. You, Boomi, you're beautiful all the time, but you don't even look more beautiful sitting next to Stan. Oh, thank you, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you, Mr. Michael Rashi. Stan, Stan makes you look better than ever, Boomi. Uh. <laughs> no, listen, I'm so happy to be here, and congratulations to you. How many years is it, Boomi? This is 46 years. 46 years. God, you know what? Like, I was, Stan, we were just talking about it the other day. You got to be consistent, right? We were talking about that. 
Yeah. And that's uh, uh, Akana, same thing. That's Consistent right. doing it for a long. That's what it takes. You can't you can't do it. You know, uh, on and off. You can't start and stop. You know, uh, is is Kenny Gamble on this program? No, Mr. Gamble's not here for this program. All right, because Mr. Gamble, he's board, but he's on the board. Mr. Gamble has a saying. He always says, "Grass grows slowly." Mm. <laughs> so you, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't That's have a powerful to, you know, statement. That's a powerful statement, statement. Yeah, and, and so, so again, congratulations to you all for, for what you have done, what you are doing. It's so important to our economy that we that we promote black and brown business. And when I say black and brown, I mean black and brown, the whole diaspora of black and brown business, whether it's international uh, or, or local, we have to promote black and brown business. And more and more people in our in our city, business people from all over are recognizing that if we don't promote and, and black wealth, if we don't do something about the, the gap between yes. white wealth and black wealth, this whole thing is gonna fall down. It's, it's, yes. it, it, we cannot continue separate with, yes. with some part of the economy being rich and another part of the economy economy being poor, that it's not going it's, it's, it's not going to work. It's not so, going to work. So, so we have to promote black and brown wealth, and we are doing a lot of great things. I'm so excited. I came out of retirement. I didn't know what I was getting into, for me, but I'm yes. loving this. I'm so excited about the opportunities that we have to try to promote black and brown wealth and what you are doing. We just want to continue to do what we can to help you and help Odunde be successful. Thank you so much, Mr. Rashid. And you're going to be such an asset to the city of Philadelphia. We are happy that you came out of retirement to well, lead our you. commerce department, Mr. Rashid. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And good okay. luck to you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Now we're going to have the Honorable Mr. David Brill. He's going to speak and say a couple words. Mr. Brill, are you ready? Okay. Thank you very much. I'd like to take this opportunity. Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Here we go. Yes, we can I, hear you. Okay. Yeah, I, um, okay. Yeah, on behalf of Governor Wolf and our Secretary, Dennis Davin, at the Pennsylvania yes. Department of Community and Economic Development, I would just like to congratulate you, Stan, Victoria, and the whole you know, ACBC team for, for putting this all together. You know, we look forward to doing more with Africa, with, you know, with, with um, people like Stan's guidance there. I think we can... Um, we can help to help do more with Africa. Our office is there to help international companies invest in Pennsylvania, as well as to help Pennsylvania companies export products and services. And we are yes. looking this year to reinvigorate our efforts in Africa, but we look forward to working with you and um, congratulations on a great program. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Bill, for being a part of our program this afternoon. Right. Thank you, and we look forward to working with you in the future. Perfect. Yeah. I look forward to working yes. with you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. We appreciate you. So thank you. So now I'm gonna hand it, uh I'm gonna hand it over to my board member, my board chair, Stan Strader. He is now gonna introduce the moderator for this afternoon's event. Thank you, Boomi, and uh congratulations again on the 46th anniversary of uh, of the Dune Day, the week-long festival, and we in the weekend today with the African Business Roundtable, and tomorrow with the Caribbean Business Roundtable. So thank you guys for joining us. I'm going to be quick. We want to uh, honor a dear friend, a esteemed scholar, as well as a seasoned diplomat, the uh, Ambassador Robin, Dr. Robin Renee Saunders, who will serve as our moderator. Robin has been uh, quickly the former United States Ambassador to Nigeria. She's been the former United States Ambassador to the Republic of Congo. She was the director of, for Africa at the National Security uh, Council at the White House. And uh, she's written several books on small business enterprise, as well as uh, women in Nigeria, a very dynamic scholar and, and a good friend, I must say. So Robin, please, uh, if you fill in any blanks that I left, but we'd love to great having you. And Thank you so very, very much, uh, Bumi. Um, and president of Adun Day, and certainly uh, my longtime friend and colleague, and uh, with uh, ACBC, uh, uh, the Adun Day chairman of the board, uh, Stan Strader. It is an absolute honor for me to be the moderator for uh, this portion of the program. Um, I don't know if Bass Cook is already with us. Is the uh, Deputy Assistant Secretary already with us? 
But I am on, okay. Hi. Hi, Jazz Cook, how are you? I'm well, it's good to see you, Ambassador Sanders. It's wonderful to see you. First of all, I wanna say congratulations uh, because I'm so proud of you and so happy that you're in this position. Uh, as was said, this is the 46th uh, uh, iteration of the Adunde Festival. Uh, it's a well-known festival that we all look forward to every year. Uh, you have a very wide-ranging audience today of not only small businesses and African diaspora businesses, but certainly for activists, uh, uh, education scholars, uh, cultural scholars. We have a little bit of interference. We're okay now. Uh, and so uh, I really want to recognize you as one of the early picks of the Biden administration to be in the Bureau of African Affairs. Uh, they could not have picked a better person uh, in terms of your leadership and your solid knowledge of the region. But also uh, you are you bring diversity as well as uh, your African ancestry uh, to the table. And for me and for others of us on the, on the uh, program today, that is so important. So with that, because I know time is tight and we, have, we hope to get to some questions and answers before you have to go, I'm going to turn it over to you, uh, Das Cook. Uh, congratulations again and welcome to the program today. And we stand ready to hear your formal remarks. Thank you, Das Cook. <laughs> Thank you, Ambassador Sanders, and thank you to the organizers of this magnificent festival, the Odunde Festival, for the opportunity to speak here today. I'd also like to send some greetings to our distinguished panelists, your excellencies and ambassadors from Cameroon, Sierra Leone, uh, Sudan, um, our commercial counselor from Namibia, Mr. Mel Foote from the constituency from Africa, and so many other uh, distinguished guests, including uh, U.S. Congressman Dwight Evans. Um, I wanted to spend a few minutes this afternoon speaking about the Biden-Harris administration's priorities and how Africa is an important part of the agenda. The past 14 months have presented the United States and the world with many challenges and in many ways that laid bare long-standing crises and inequities that had been sitting just below the surface. We're still trying to recover from a health crisis, an economic crisis, a climate crisis, a democracy and governance crisis, and a racial justice reckoning. And so this administration's number one priority is to build back better. America cannot overcome its challenges alone. So we must have a blend of humility and confidence as we recognize that we play a leadership role along with our partners in solving our common problems. To build back better, we need a foreign policy for the middle class, one that centers the middle class, prepares US workers for the jobs of the future, which frankly has arrived, um, a, a, a future that diversifies the US economy through support for emergent technologies and expansion into new and or, or underserved uh, markets. It's about creating new and better jobs, raising wages and strengthening communities. Africa is a key part of a, that agenda. We see African countries as partners, not pawns in a geopolitical competition. We already partner with African countries on a number of shared interests, including improving public health, boosting economic growth in many other areas. And robust trade, investment, and commercial linkages with Africa has to be part of the equation. We see opportunities to deepen our partnerships as we collectively confront the climate crisis and envision a future fueled by climate smart growth and innovation. As we seek to perfect our multiracial democracy and strengthen governance, shore up our institutions and root out corruption, we see opportunities to partner with Africa to improve business and regulatory climates to encourage more trade and investment. We are working at the US Department of State and throughout the US government on a whole of government approach to increasing two-way trade and investment with the continent. And that's why I'm so excited to be here today to hear from people in the business community who are developing those trade and investment ties every day. We are also looking at Africa's youth. 
The next generation of Africans will be central to economic growth. I see great promise in investing in Africa's technological sectors, including in financial technology, educational technologies, artificial intelligence, health and medical technology, and other parts of our digital transformation. I know many U.S. companies are making investments in digital skills training to promote innovation in e-commerce and ensure the brilliance and ingenuity in Africa's young people leads us into a better future. But first, we must end this pandemic. COVID-19 has taken an enormous economic and social toll on all of us, but has also reinforced the importance of doubling down on our efforts to reach our essential goals of economic diversification, mutually beneficial growth and development, and expanded opportunities for our citizens wherever they are. We are focused on responding to COVID-19 crises around the world. State and USAID has provided $500 million in emergency health, humanitarian, economic, and development assistance to Sub-Saharan Africa alone to fight the pandemic. We recognize the need for vaccines in Africa and are taking action, including through COVAX and Gavi, partnerships between the private sector, the African Union, and Africa CDC to not only respond to this pandemic, but to build Africa's capacity to prevent and respond to future pandemics. We are also supporting African capacity to manufacture vaccines right on the continent. COVID-19 has dealt Sub-Saharan Africa a hard blow as the region entered a recession in 2020 for the first time in 25 years due to the pandemic. And we're working to help Africa recover. Another challenge is facing us all right now, no matter where we live, is the climate crisis. The United States is helping to raise global climate ambition by engaging climate diplomacy bilaterally and across a wide range of multilateral bodies. President Biden announced the International Climate Finance Plan to increase quality and quantity of climate finance and spur the private sector contrib to contribute more to climate funding. In addition, the DFC, the Development Finance Corporation, has recently announced two rounds of solicitations, one for distributed renewable energy projects and the other for climate-focused investment funds. We encourage U.S. businesses to work with local partners to put forward proposals. We all need to do our part on this critical issue and engagement on climate change is vital. When we look at our economic engagement with Africa, we recognize that your engagement as members of the private sector and members of the diaspora is key to driving economic growth and creating jobs in both Africa and the United States. As a happy consumer of chocolate, I'm glad to see that cocoa trade is integral to the economy of the region. And I'm looking forward to hearing more about how businesses in the Philadelphia and greater Pennsylvania uh, region are expanding trade ties with Africa. To support economic growth, we are encouraging more businesses and especially small and medium sized businesses, the backbone of the middle class to take a closer look at Sub-Saharan Africa. We want companies to see the opportunities, and we want to see smaller companies take advantage of opportunities in dynamic African economies. We also want to do more to enable the diaspora, people of African descent, to fuel the expansion of the middle class here in the United States and in Africa. Engagement with the diaspora will be an important part of our work through our whole of government Prosper Africa Initiative, a one-stop shop which coordinates the efforts of the United States government, trade and investment agencies, and our embassies overseas to support increased two-way trade and investment. We know that U.S. companies seek opportunities where they can compete on an even, transparent playing level. We in the U.S. government are focused on promoting transparency and fair practices that are favorable to attracting high quality investment. I encourage our African partners to continue their good work in fostering good business environments. They have reaped the benefits of investment, economic growth, and job creation. We want to see this continue to enhance all our economies. U.S. economic and commercial engagement also includes the African Growth and Opportunity Act, or AGOA, which many of you may be aware provides beneficiary countries with duty-free access to U.S. markets for eligible products. 
Currently, 39 African countries are AGOA beneficiaries. We encourage these AGOA partner countries to take advantage of the program to the fullest extent possible to increase jobs and economic diversification. The U.S. also supports the African Continental Free Trade Area's goal of a more attractive, less fragmented market for trade and investment. We want to be supportive of this historic initiative and contribute to its success with technical advice where we can be helpful. And while we want to support all the sectors in Africa, I'm very interested in the creative industries on the continent, which represent a growing business market. I see Africa's creative industries having a growing influence on American audiences as well. And there are a few ways that I suggest that we build the Africa we want with regard to the creative industries. First, we can work together on expanding economic opportunity for the creative sector. Second, the AFCFTA has the potential to provide African Union member states with avenues to better promote and protect the many rich and vibrant aspects of African cultures through enhanced intellectual property protections, as well as to expand their ap appreciation through access to new markets. We're also looking at Africa's youth. As I mentioned, this next generation of Africans will be central to economic growth. And I see great promise in investing in Africa's technological sectors, including in financial technology and other areas. And I know that US companies are making investments in digital skills to um, promote innovation and e-commerce and ensure the brilliance and ingenuity in Africa's young people. Finally, the U.S. is committed to deepening our engagement with young people across the African continent through the Young African Leaders Initiative. We firmly believe in helping to empower young people to drive the digital transformation um, and to drive the people to people exchange between young people here in the United States and young people in Africa. This will be key to our global economic recovery. I believe the U.S. government will continue to use our soft power, engaging with young people, encouraging educational opportunities, and promoting American business. I believe that this will lead to realizing the positive vision for the future that will lead to success and prosperity for all of us. Africa is a continent full of opportunities. Thank you for your interest. Thank you for this wonderful and dynamic uh, festival. And I look forward to answering any of your questions and, uh, and listening to your discussion about how to deepen engagement between African and American businesses. Thank you. Thank you so, so very, very much, uh, Das Cook, uh, for such a broad and expansive picture of where the Build Back Better emphasis is going to be for the U.S.-Africa relationship. What I was asked to do to by the organizers was to pull together uh, in an overarching bucket, kind of the, the thematic questions that uh, their audiences have had uh, from you know, whether they're in business, education, uh, certainly the security issues that we all are reading about today provide a backdrop for that as well. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna kind of uh, group those together for you a little bit. And then if we have more time, we can you know, break it down a, a bit more. So I'm gonna start sort of with the business and investment and trade aspect of things. I think a majority of our audience uh, might fall into that particular bucket. So, you know, to start with, um, I don't think we can talk about sort of business trade and investment without at least touching on the backdrop of security today and what that means. Mm -hmm. So what would be your recommendations for uh, uh, businesses, whether they're diaspora businesses or other, to kind of manage and navigate their way to some of the security challenges that we see in West Africa today, in order to do some of the wonderful things that you highlighted in your Yes, it's a, it's a great question. And of course, you really can't have tremendous the kinds of tremendous economic growth that we envision for Africa or even recover successfully from the recession brought on from the pandemic without addressing the security situation uh, in many African countries. And so the U.S. government is continuing to work through multilateral organizations to address these security issues, to work bilaterally with a number of countries, including in West Africa and, of course, 
East Africa, where we see a number of challenges um, to address the growing threat of uh, violent extremism and, and, um, and to ensure that uh, we have the peace that is necessary to spur economic growth. Yeah, that is, uh, you know, a, a great segue into some of the granular questions about how we access and use some of the great USG programs that we have in business and investment and for trade. I think that the experiences that a number of the members of the audience have had over the last couple of years, whether it's, you know, with uh, you know, trying to access BFC, XM, or any of our other great programs, is that... Uh, they're not really designed for uh, uh, easy access for the African diaspora. It's tend to be one to 10 people at the most. They certainly don't have the, the capital uh, levels that are sometimes requested uh, by these uh, uh, initiatives. And so if you can talk a little bit about, and this build back better, how are we going to navigate to that so that the great things that you talked about can really be taken advantage of. That really includes also the hubs. Uh, the African trade hubs. Uh, they have initiatives, as you know, but very hard for African small businesses and particularly women owned uh, small businesses to really take advantage. Yes, I love this question because it speaks to um, a focus area for this administration, which is really making it easier for small businesses to access the large amount of uh, of tools that are available through the U.S. government. Um, some folks in your audience may know that there are 17 different U.S. government agencies that have tools for uh, for businesses that are interested in doing uh, uh, engaging in Africa, or investing in Africa, or exporting to Africa, and that can be really complicated to navigate, particularly for small businesses. And that is why the Prosper Africa Initiative, which is really the one-stop shop for companies in the U.S. that are looking to do business with Africa, that is their first stop because Prosper Africa has been designed to really be able to help businesses navigate all of these tools um, and to help to source deals. It helps to secure deals. And so I would really encourage small businesses, uh, particularly diaspora businesses, which we are working to um, connect with and to really hear from how we can better respond as we build out and relaunch Prosper Africa um, to ensure that we can meet the needs, uh, their unique needs around the country. Because as you said, you know, it can be really challenging for a small business with just a few people to really navigate these tools, but they exist and we have them here uh, and want people to be able to take advantage of them. And so I, the first thing I would say is, to really explore the, the resources available through Prosper Africa, um, because that uh, is, is really quite an exciting innovation for the U.S. government to have a one-stop shop that companies, uh, and particularly small, medium-sized, but diaspora and women-owned businesses can take advantage of. Thank you. I, I want to just drill down on that uh, a little bit more because uh, over the year we've had a lot of conferences on this issue. So I understand that sort of Prosper Africa 2.0, I think you guys are calling it internally, uh, it, it is looking to be wonderful things that you mentioned. But if you could also kind of do a delineation between sort of the co-investment technical assistance stuff that Prosper uh, Africa provides, and then the, challenging, the challenges with the financing that we have. Uh, because the biggest thing that we heard uh, in our conference earlier in the year was that uh, the requirements are still the same as if you were a big company. You know, even though you, you have access to these two paperwork and, you know, the uh, capital requirements haven't really changed that much. So you can kind of educate the audience on sort of the, the difference there between the financing challenges and then, of course, the, uh, the that Prosper Africa is not a, a, a financing tool. Right, right. Or investment right. and... and um, and technical assistance to Yes. Yes. Yeah, so proper for Africa is technical assistance. And it also part of the initiative is the work that we do to provide um, assistance through uh, addressing enabling environment issues through the USAID trade hubs. Um, but it essentially is really a, a, an assistance tool for businesses 
to navigate financing. There are a number of, um, of agencies, including the Development Finance Corporation, XM, that can provide financing. But um, to your point, sometimes this financing really are focused on much larger deals and much larger numbers. And so we are working to identify uh, financing options, uh, including those that DFC can do with partners that are able to then um, help to finance uh, projects at a smaller scale. And so it's an area that we're actively working on, um, but part Prosper and what they can do as part of their assistance is to help identify financing, uh, financing sources. That's fantastic. Is there anything special being focused on for uh, the Africa businesses uh, for women of color? Uh, because we know there's about a $50 billion worldwide gap in financing and the bulk of that, unfortunately, is, is uh, women of color business, which is further underscored by, by COVID. So is there anything special being focused on for, for women in small business? Definitely a focus on small businesses and women and diaspora owned businesses, um, uh, outreach to them, but also as we are developing and refining uh, how we implement the Prosper Africa uh, 2.0 uh, uh, um, uh, strategy will definitely be looking at what, how we can better support um, women-owned businesses and small businesses in particular. Um, but again, you know, there's a real emphasis on diaspora-owned businesses because we understand that people of African descent here in this country have a special interest, have special ties to the African continent and are often willing and able to you know, uh, take some of the risks that are involved with in, uh, investing in Africa, are more enthusiastic about engaging with Africa. And so we wanna ensure that we are able to enable that. And so you'll see as we un uh, unveil um, our renewed uh, Prosper strategy that there will be a real focus uh, on these areas. Thank you. And then uh, turning to the African Continental Free Trade Agreement mm -hmm. a little bit. Uh, you know, I, I want to congratulate uh, you and the administration for really making that sharp U-turn on AFCTA uh, in terms of being uh, more supportive and really engaging. So can you, uh, you met, touch on it a little bit in your remarks, but can you expand a little bit on uh, what we're actually doing to support AFCTA? Uh, I know they have uh, SME or small business uh, protocols and, you know, what are we doing to help them with that? Because we know that um, uh, the potential there uh, is enormous, uh, not only for us as a trading partner, but certainly for the overall economy at large. Yeah, so AFCFTA presents a, an enormous opportunity. I mean, for us to be able to take the 49 uh, countries in Sub-Saharan Africa and really try to create one market will be really transformative for, for the private sector and others looking to invest in Africa. And so we see a real opportunity there. As the AFCFTA sets up a secretariat in Ghana, we are working with the secretariat to provide technical assistance where we can um, and continue to engage with the secretariat to identify additional opportunities for, for such assistance. And so we are really looking forward to robust support of that through and, and including through the Prosper Africa uh, initiative. Okay, and lastly, because I'm looking at your time and I know that we have a 45 uh, stop. Um, hopefully you might be able to stay for some of the panel, but we understand if you can't. Mention Yali and we've seen recently that, you know, Yali has been extended and we're all jumping for joy on that. Um, I was just curious whether or not, uh, you know, given the size of the youth population and even though Yali is wonderful, it's a limited amount of, of so are there other things you'd be thinking about on the education and the cultural, cultural front that particularly also includes historic, historically black colleges and universities? Um, and so if there's something that, that you guys are thinking about in that area or you're looking for ideas for us to send in because there are a lot of people here that, that, you know, that, can, that can be stakeholders helpful to you uh, if you're doing that. But just touch a little bit about uh, on that. And then connected to that is, you know, building these bridges between the, the Africa diaspora here. And when I say diaspora, I, I think I'm saying it in the same way that you are. That is the big D. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's African, direct African descent, as well as 
those of us whose family came over generations and generations uh, earlier. And mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, how do we further strengthen those cultural ties that connects to business, that connects to everything that you talked about? So those mm -hmm. two buckets. Okay, so yeah, so that's, and I see a question from uh, Melvin Foote in the chat asking the exact same question. So yes, I define uh, diaspora as the big D. It is everybody with uh, with roots in Africa, all descendants of uh, um, uh, Africa. Um, and, you know, we see that there are cultural ties, business ties. And so, um, you know, the cultural ties, I think, are really, really important. And we are looking at ways to strengthen that um, and to, um, you know, I, I spoke a bit in my remarks about the creative industries and how important, we, you know, we've seen that, um, you know, the explosion of Nollywood and Afro beats and the, the music and the culture, the food. I, I Some people in your audience may have seen the Netflix special High on the Hog that talks about the origin of so many of the, you know, frankly, what I consider the best American food has all of its roots in Africa. Um, and so we have these rich cultural connections between people of African descent here in the United States and on Africa. And I think, you know, looking for ways that the State Department and the U.S. government can, can um, support those connections is going to be critical. You mentioned YALI, and we are so proud of that program. I mean, we have 25,000 alumni of the YALI program, and now it's a, 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 a membership network that has over 700,000 people in the network. Um, we've 10 years into YALI, and we see such huge opportunities to leverage YALI's network uh, for business and entrepreneurs to help think about innovation. I mean, if, if you've been, you know, I know Ambassador Sanders, you spent so much time in Africa, so you know the brilliance and ingenuity that exists among young people in Africa. We've seen that ingenuity in areas like financial technology. I mean, it was really born and pioneered the right. mobile technology fintech in Africa, right, out of necessity. And I think that there's real potential particularly in the areas of educational technology, because we know that African uh, young people are have always been looking for to the United States for educational opportunities. And over the last year and a half, where we've all seen the explosion of educational technology as we're now able to have, you know, virtual school, you know, and then my, my daughter is does her virtual school in the room right over. And so you now have this tremendous opportunity to really educate to reskill and upskill for the for the jobs of the future, and I think that young people in Africa are going to be a key part of that. Um, and of course, as entrepreneurs, you know, so now uh, even here in the United States, we've seen the changes that have happened over the last year as we realize that everybody doesn't have to live in Silicon Valley. You know, you don't have to be in Silicon Valley, New York, Boston, and LA. You can actually be a, spread across the, the country and really across the world and have the same kinds of, of, um, of access to entrepreneurs, investors, and finance. Thing. And so I think it's a really exciting time um, for us to be looking at a lot of these issues, to be partnering with Africa. And, you know, I'm really excited about learning and hearing from all of you. And I do have a few minutes to, to hang out for the panel. Great. So looking Great. forward to uh, One of that. the messages that I think most of us would like to share with you on that diaspora is that, you know, for State Department in particular, well, U.S. government in general, uh, sometimes make a, a delineation there between the African diaspora and the African American, any element of it in some of the conferences and stuff that you have. And so the message going back to you is stop, you know, change that because we don't do it with any other ethnic group at all. And yeah. so when you're inviting, you know, for a, a conference, um, you know, it, it should be all inclusive, that big D diaspora. We haven't haven't traditionally done that at state. So that would be a message to take take back home. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. I'm taking Thank it home, Lord. Thank you. Thank you so very, very much. Uh, and now we are going to turn to our esteemed panel. Um, I will turn back to the host to get everyone on. Uh, I also make sure that Das Cook is on as well because she's going to hang out, she said, with us, which is fantastic. 
for a few minutes for uh, the panel. Hi, I'm Matthew. Can, can everyone hear me? I'm sorry, we have a little technical difficulties here. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you and then have Uncle Stan on. Okay, okay so we we have our, if you don't mind, um, Ambassador Sanders, we have our Councilwoman Derek, Mr. Mr. Derek, Councilman Derek Green from Philadelphia. He's gonna give a couple words for about one minute. We're gonna have sure. him speak. Is that okay? That's and absolutely then we're gonna bring fine. It back to you, Moderator okay. Sanders, and we're gonna go back into the speaking to all the ambassadors. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Give us one minute, okay? Sure. All right. Councilman Green, thank you so much for joining us. No problem. Thank you so much, Bluey, for allowing me an opportunity. I apologize for the delay. We are trying to pass our budget here at okay. City Council. But thank you for all the great work with the Dune Day 365, always being on the case and not allowing COVID to stop doing the great work that you're doing. Yes. I thank Stan Strader for him always being engaged and allowing me to participate in the outstanding work that you're doing. And also the fact that you're talking about business. And, you know, I have a business background and we need to do much more business and how we can connect those businesses here in the city of Philadelphia with those abroad and the opportunities so that we can really grow the base in our city, reduce our poverty and provide more opportunities for everyone. So I want to thank you for the great work you're doing. Thank you for always having this roundtable for the yes. African Business Roundtable and yes. to the Caribbean Business Roundtable. And on my mother's side, we're from Barbados, so I'm always supporting um, those yes. who are Bayesian descent. So thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Councilman Green. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate okay. it. Thank you. I can see you. You pick a stay. Then you in the Okay. Ambassador Sanders, we are now back to you. Thank you. Um, I'm looking for the panel to come on board okay, as well I'm gonna as- add, I'm gonna add the visual. panel on board now. Okay. Okay. And ambassador, yeah, okay. One more time, and one more ambassador. Okay, everybody's here. I'm gonna remove myself. Okay, I think we're missing one person though. Um, Joanna. Um, Joanna is here. Okay, I don't see her, but that's okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and, uh, uh, Das Cook, uh, you know, we look forward to your visit to the region. I know that you're going to get asked that. And certainly, um, I want to recognize this wonderful program in Philadelphia called Africa Town, and a lot of people on the, the political leaders, as well as the uh, New Day initiative, are all working on this wonderful location in Philadelphia they call Africa Town. And love to have you come out there and take a look as well absolutely absolutely uh uh looking forward to getting the invitation and getting send me the details okay for uh, sure okay well, now we turn to our esteemed panel uh thank you panelists for being here there are a lot of you that i have met of course uh before and in the interest of time we're just going to jump right into it i'm going to start uh of course with the, uh, the honorable ambassador from uh cameroon Ambassador Sombel, I don't know if you are here, sir. Excellency, are you here? Okay, then uh, hopefully if he comes in, we can just jump back over to him. Uh, I'm gonna turn now to the Honorable Ambassador from Sierra Leone, Ambassador Abu Bakar Wow -wa -wa or Way. I'm sorry, sir, or uh, if I'm pronouncing it wrong, uh, wall, I see on your screen, which is a different note than I have here. So it's wall at the end. And so good to see you again, uh, Excellency. Um, I'm delighted to, um, to be able to see you again. And, you know, Sierra Leone is near and dear to my heart. Uh, my family's from South Carolina, so we've got that beachy connection with, uh, with Sierra Leone. And so uh, it's, it's wonderful to to see. Uh, we really want all of the speakers today on the panel to, as they talk about business and investment opportunities in their countries, but also talk a little bit about the investment code as well, because that's going to be important to our, our listeners. And Daz Cook, if you have a question, just uh, let me know uh, after each uh, presentation before you leave, and then I can make sure that you get your question uh, uh, asked to the ambassador. So, Ambassador Wild from Sierra Leone, please go ahead, okay. sir. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, good, good afternoon, and uh, thank you, Ambassador 
Robin sent uh, uh, my dear sister, uh, DAS Akuna Cook, thank you so much. And then thank the uh, Odun Day uh, group for celebrating their 46th anniversary. And uh, there would be no better way of uh, really celebrating that uh, anniversary than bringing the family together to have a family discussion. That's how I see it. And um, uh, I, I like to also uh, extend my, my, uh, my congratulations and greetings to the board chair, the chair of this incredible group. Uh, I wish we could have been doing this in person, but uh, as post COVID, we may be able to do that. Um, I wonder, and I'm so glad that uh, the uh, DS uh, uh, Akuna spoke quite eloquently at some of the programs that um, uh, particularly uh, Prosper Africa that we've been talking about, which is really a uh, phenomenal program. And I also want to commend the State Department, the U.S. State Department, for their partnership with our country and the entire government of the United States as the good work that they are doing uh, uh, in my country. Well, let me, let me go straight to some, give some numbers, just to pr put it in a proper context. There are 8.5 million Africans born in Africa that now live in the United States. There are Africans in every state of the union. They vote, they go to school here, our children were born here. And as I speak here, I give a lot of credit to my president, uh, Honorable Julius Madabu for appointing me as perhaps the first African uh, diaspora ambassador who has lived in this country for about 40 years. So when you're talking about the diaspora, uh, I am one of them. And I certainly uh, relate to these relationships uh, that have been lost and that we're bringing together. And I have to commend my good friend and brother, uh, Melvin Foote, who has clearly been in the forefront with many others in expanding uh, uh, this relationship. Um, the, the good thing to talk about, uh, this platform is a good business. It's a good uh, platform. I we, rather than going into many, I will go directly to tell you my, about my country. Um, Sierra Leone, has a population of 7.5 million. 7,813 215 kilometers. 70, covering 76,620. With water, while water it covers 120 kilometers. And I use this to say, our country has been noted I'm not the one saying it, but the people who do traveling all over the world, that Sri Leone is one of the best destinations for tourism. Lumbly Beach, to name a few. And our culture, cultural mosaic, very much ties into the exactly the proposal that the Biden administration is talking about the African culture, the African youth. Should I also say that in 2025, the largest population of people on the planet Earth will be youth. And we have a large percentage of those in our country. Our country is also divided into North, South, East, West, and Central as a country that has a distinct history in promoting democratic practice. We have a judiciary that is independent. We have a governance structure. And we have, within three years of President Madabio's administration, moved the corruption index from 20, in 2017 to a measly 40 something, and today we are 83. 
perhaps one of the best countries on the continent of Africa. That was made evident by the MCC, the Millennium Challenge Corporation, which recognized Sierra Leone as compact eligible to get a purse of over $400 million. And our country is endowed with natural resources, raising, ranging from agricultural produce of cacao, coffee, cassava, minerals, and diamonds. Of course, whenever you talk to people, they talk about Australian blood diamond. We have the, the best diamonds uh, on planet Earth. And we have a huge population of about 5.4 million hectares of arable land for agriculture. In the area of tourism, we have spectacular seascapes, unexplored islands, breathtaking ecotourism, and a lot of clean beaches. And even our youthful population in the country are now ready to be engaged in the labor force. Robust policy regulations and the legal framework that the government has put in place under the distinguished, distinguished leadership of our president have created an environment to promote a business climate. We have the deepest natural harbor in the sub-region. And we are hard at work in developing our network on roads in the country. And we are direct, we have direct access to the ECOWAS market, access to US market under the protection of the African Growth and Opportunity Act. The government, my government has established an investment board co-chaired by the president and the vice president as a one-stop shop. So anybody that wants to invest their monies into our country, if there are issues, you don't have to go to this office, that office, you come there, it's a one-stop shop. And additionally, there's a comprehensive investment code that will ease the burden of doing business in my country. Tax regimes, customs processing have been automated and streamlined. We have attractive regimes of incentives, including waivers, tax breaks, and tax credits. We have introduced the first ever national cooperation corporate governance code, perhaps the first in West Africa, that seeks to improve transparency, accountability, and corporate governance in our country. Honorable Ambassador, you have about one more minute. All right, I, I could just say now, we are at the helm of the Mano River Union which is four countries that has a population of almost 40 million. So when we are talking about Prosper Africa, I could say to the Honorable Akuna Cook, this office, my office brought four ambassadors together to invest in the infrastructure by a real connectivity. So I, that has never happened, but you guys have the proposal. Let us make Prosper Africa, Prosper Africa, by not just putting something on paper, but where our youths, our people, our Africans in the diaspora could benefit from this. I yield back, Madam Chair. And Thank, I'm you. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, it's wonderful to hear all the fantastic things that, that you're doing. Uh, I know the last time I saw you was at the AGOA Ministerial, actually, and so it's great to hear all the progress that you've made since then, Ambassador Wa. Uh, I'm going to turn to Ambassador Somba uh, right now, and then uh, Das Cook, I'll turn to you for any, um, I'm going to take both ambassadors first, and then I'll turn to you for any uh, engagement or questions or comments you want to make to what they said. Uh, so I hope that sounds reasonable to you. Because uh, I'm paying attention also to, I, I, I know and respect your time. Uh, Ambassador Asomba, please go ahead. You have about five minutes. Uh, and the Honorable Ambassador Asomba is from Cameroon, the Republic of Cameroon. And we look forward to hearing you talk about the trade and investment climate and particularly your investment code 
uh, in, um, uh, in Cameroon. And you might want to also touch a little bit about the security environment and how people navigate that as a business person. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you, Chair, uh, and thank you for the uh, to the city of Philadelphia for uh, giving me this uh, opportunity to address uh, this uh, uh, forum. I think it's a necessary uh, uh, and very useful platform in, uh, uh, in the sense that uh, Given the uh, as we are entering, uh, start thinking to the uh, post-COVID uh, era, uh, uh, we need to explore how best we can uh, 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 cooperate with the United States, uh, given uh, the uh, reality that there is a new administration in place and uh, a range of uh, uh, fields where uh, cooperation can be uh, uh, expanded and the readiness of this uh, new administration to uh, facilitate uh, this uh, uh, agenda. So uh, I'm quite uh, uh, grateful to uh, all those who have contributed to uh, making this uh, meeting uh, uh, a reality. Uh, I don't want to uh, uh, go back to the uh, uh, introducing my country. I think we have a long uh, uh, bilateral uh, uh, history of uh, uh, bilateral relationship with the United States it's from the early 60s. Uh, what I would like to focus on is uh, two things, is the fact that uh, the new administration is, uh, 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 ready to promote uh, small uh, uh, to, to promote economic uh, uh, relation uh, uh, with Africa, and to that end, I want to say that uh, as far as Cameroon is concerned, we see ourselves as uh, being privileged because, uh, uh, given the uh, 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 the, uh, the relationship we have with the United States. Uh, as I mentioned it from the early 60s, we have this advantage of uh, uh, engagement with the city of Philadelphia, uh, the, the state of Phila the, the, the Pennsylvania. Uh, the city of Philadelphia is twinned with uh, uh, the city of Douala, and we have an agenda of uh, cooperation uh, unfortunately, the uh, uh, the surge of uh, uh, COVID-19 has uh, uh, put on hold all this uh, enthusiasm and, and, and the readiness of both parties to uh, 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 participate to the uh, uh, agenda, the, the reconstruction of the two English-speaking uh, uh, region in Cameroon namely the Northwest and the Southwest. Uh, I think this is the way I would like to, uh, uh, this is how, where I would like our exchange here to be a, 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 a focus, in the sense that my country uh, quite recently uh, have com has completed uh, its agenda of returning uh, the economic uh, 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 power to the regions. So politically, we organize uh, 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 the central program of decentralization. We have 10 regions, and each region from uh, uh, now on uh, should uh, 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 we give them back the autonomy. In order to uh, 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 create conditions at the local level uh, 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 for the uh, welfare and economic development to expand. So it is a very uh, important agenda in the sense that uh, uh, people will feel uh, directly concerned by a, in every respect of their uh, 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 economic and social life. 
if you can imagine the, the, the field of agriculture, field of industry and the services, not to mention uh, 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 the uh, tourism activities. Uh, it should be recalled here that Cameroon is known to be Africa in miniature. Everything you want to see in the continent, you will find it in Cameroon. So it's, uh, touristically speaking, it's a very uh, important destination. So the region, the 10 region the, uh, that haven't been given back their autonomy are putting in place the structure, the necessary structure for the implementation of uh, these policies of uh, uh, taking within their own hands the uh, welfare of the people. So we are expecting all these regions in, uh, in two to three months to uh, uh, <coughs> announce their uh, respective uh, agenda for development. And as you can imagine, I would like the a experience with Philadelphia to serve as a model in, in how to expand the uh, uh, cooperation between my country and the, uh, uh, between the, the 10 regions of my country and every uh, 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 any other cities here in the United States, uh, starting by uh, Philadelphia, because we shouldn't limit uh, uh, the cooperation with, uh, uh, of Philadelphia with only Douala and uh, uh, Bamenda in the northwest. Uh, I, I'm saying here that the uh, rest of the region uh, are eager to engage into uh, the very same agenda uh, in uh, developing a small uh, business and enterprises, in developing tourism, developing education. Uh, I want to mention here that uh, Cameroon uh, at the educational level is one of the uh, one of the country in the continent having a very high rate of uh, 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 <coughs> high education. We have eight public universities. Uh, if you add to them the, the uh, private universities, uh, I think we will be about uh, around twenty. So it, this is a domain where uh, the possibility of uh, cooperation, uh, cooperation should be uh, explored and deepened. I'm quite sure that uh, we will, uh, uh, in the course of the coming month, uh, bring to the, uh, uh, <coughs> the uh, uh, US partner and the city of Philadelphia in particular, uh, a wide range of uh, uh, domain. This going from uh, 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 energy to education. So uh, we will uh, be able to present uh, this uh, agenda, the different agenda uh, 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 of the, uh, the 10 different regions in Cameroon. Thank you so much, Ambassador. You have about one one, one minute or 30 seconds that I can give you to wrap up. Yes, I'm, I'm just uh, concluding by saying I see this uh, uh, meeting as a very good opportunity for uh, me to uh, engage with uh, United States, given the uh, all the tools uh, that are on the table, that, that have, been, have been put on the table by the new administration. We are looking forward to uh, make a good use of it. Maybe I, I would like to make the last mention. Uh, it, it, uh, I think I'm taking advantage of the uh, 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 Mr. Uh, Mrs. Cook uh, remark concern, concerning Agoa. This is a domain I would like the new administration to show the inclusiveness because the way the Agoa had been monitored and we are uh, four years before the ending of the cycle of, of this law. If we do nothing, can we imagine that there is uh, the whole region of 
Central African sub-region. No country within that region uh, is part of the Agoa. Cameroon used to be the uh, only uh, example. We've been suspended uh, last year. Okay, I don't want to engage into it, but I think this is a domain the, the new administration should be very uh, uh, attentive to. Thank you for the opportunity given to me uh, today. Thank you so much, Ambassador Sumba. Adas Cook, uh, I turn the floor over to you for uh, about a minute. Uh, if you have comments for either of our honorable excellencies here, that would be great. Uh, thank you, Ambassador Sanders. And before I uh, before I drop off for another meeting, I just wanted to both thank uh, my good friend uh, Ambassador uh, Sadiq Wai from Sierra Leone and Ambassador Somba. Thank you so Somba. Thank you so much for your comments. Um, I just wanted to quickly say that yes, of course, we are very much focused on the entire economic relationship to include the uh, AGOA, which of course uh, is due to expire in 2025. And so we are thinking about how, what, what happens after 2025 with AGOA and want to make sure that we are engaging with all of our partners, our, our uh, ambassadors across the uh, across the continent and so we've begun the process um, of convening by regional uh, organizations various ambass uh, groups of ambassadors here in Washington DC to discuss the economic engagement including with our partners uh, at USTR that have the lead on AGOA but also our commerce to talk about uh, uh, private sector engagement um, USAID to talk about development. And so you will be hearing more about that because we very much want to get your input as we are finalizing our uh, engagement strategy. And so again, I just want to thank you again for the invitation to speak today. And I look forward to working with uh, all of you ambassadors and congratulations again to the organizers of the Donde Festival for such a uh, marvelous program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Das Cook, for being here. Uh, we so appreciated your formal remarks and your interactive engagement. Look forward to your first trip out to the region, uh, your trip to Philadelphia. And we consider us part of your universe of stakeholders. And we're here to be supportive and helpful to you. And uh, thank you so much for staying for this portion of the panel. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We're going to continue on with the panel. Uh, the next speaker, of Ambassadors, I do hope uh, that you can stay for a moment. Uh, Ambassador Y and Ambassador Sombe, I hope that's okay. Um, yes. I'm, I'm going to turn uh, um, Joanna Mills from uh, the Embassy of, of Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, Ms. Mills, uh, please go ahead. Uh, we have about five minutes. We're really tight on time here. Uh, so I'm going to try to hold you to those five minutes. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Well, greetings to everyone, ambassadors, congressmen, city councils. Uh, my name is Joanna Miles. I am the assistant of the ambassador, His Excellency Inza Kamara, who is the Delegate General of the Economic Promotion Service of Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, on the behalf of His Excellency, the ambassador, Inza Kamara, I want to thank the entire team of the Undundi Festival for offering us this platform to be for offering us this platform and for allowing us to introduce our, our service and our program. I also want to thank Mr. Stroder for his continued support and contribution to our services and accomplishments. So before telling you about SPACI, our service, I wanna take you back to the genesis of it. So when the president of Cote d'Ivoire, His Excellency Alassane Ouattara resumed office back in 2011, um, he had one goal, he really wanted to turn Cote d'Ivoire into an emerging country within the context of the world economy. He knew that he had to deepen economic and trade relations, and he understood the benefit of, of international trade, foreign investment, so he decided to create a new ecosystem in which he will fulfill those goals. So this is how the Economic Promotion Service was born. And he picked the ambassador, His Excellency, Inza Kamara, who at the time was running um, a consulting agency called the Global Africa Business Consulting Group. And this is how 
the service start growing. So who is SPECI and what do we do? So the Economic Promotion Service of Cote d'Ivoire in Canada, in the United States, Canada and Mexico, we provide information regarding industries, business environments and, in, and investment opportunity. We also have, I want you to remember four keywords, conduct, coordinate, promote and attract. We conduct all economic, commercial, tourism related activities. We promote US direct investment in Cote d'Ivoire and we attract funding from American investors. Now, why invest in Cote d'Ivoire? Well, Cote d'Ivoire has a strong eco macroeconomic environment, a solid position in the international market and a large amount of natural resources. Cote d'Ivoire is the hub of West Africa, the fastest growing economy in Africa, the first world producer of cocoa colonists, the first world exporter and producer of cashew nuts. And from 2020, 2011 to 2017, sorry, um, foreign investments in Cote d'Ivoire have doubled, going from 302 million to 675 million. And we also have, we, are, we also are the first African banana producer. So the, go the Ivorian government has drafted a national development plan which put more emphasis on foreign investments and new infrastructure because we know that the economy needs a reliable infrastructure to connect supply chain and efficient efficiently move goods and service, service across borders. So um, to sustain the Ivorian economy, the government has invested more than $7 billion in infrastructure. A train network and bridges to Abidjan are new investment currently on the way. Um, some of Cote d'Ivoire natural resources have been unexplored, such as gold, nickel, diamonds, manganese. Um, just to give you a few numbers, gold production has risen from 12 tons in 2011 to um, 32.5 tons in 2019. Um, mang manganese production has grown from 200,000 200, tons in 2016 to 1.2, 1, 1 million tons in 2019. So of course we also have tourism, we have uh, the Comoy National Park, San Pedro, Asini Mafia. Um, yeah, and also uh, right now, as I said before, the ambassador is currently on a trade mission in Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, the American invest investors involved want to invest in the line of business of technology, education, construction, real estate, solar energy, and agriculture. Uh, I'm also happy to announce that we have just finalized a big construction project with inv American investors uh, financing construction of a university residence, um, and it is worth $200 million, $250 million. Uh, I, I would love also to announce that we are organizing a seminar this fall, most likely in October, and um, this event will basically, um, this event will, will be a matchmaking between uh, American agencies and SMEs. It will facilitate SMEs access to new forms of financing by promoting their capitalization. Um, if you wanna, you're in. If you're interested in investing in Cote d'Ivoire, um, you can send us an email on invest in Cote d'Ivoire at spcamerica.org. Thank you so very much. You know, just a few minutes <laughs> to be quick. Yeah, no, you did a wonderful job. You really highlighted some of the things I was going to ask you in terms of what sectors for SME businesses you touched on that. I forgot to mention, sorry, um, we, we're working hand in hand with uh, the Center for Promotion of Investment in Cote, Investment in Cote d'Ivoire, uh, which is the one stop service desk for the investment in Cote d'Ivoire. It coordinates. Uh, the initiative in terms of investment promotions and private sector development. Thank you very much. We look forward to the wonderful program that you mentioned for uh, October. And I Thank think that you. would be great for Africa diaspora uh, businesses to, 
participate and we look forward to exchanging more information on that. Uh, next, I'm gonna to turn to uh, Madam uh, Petrina. I know her well, uh, I served in Namibia and, uh, and I know that uh, there's a great interest in having uh, uh, US uh, businesses in Namibia. You tried to put together last year a wonderful trade mission that COVID kind of knocked out of the park, unfortunately. So look forward to your five minute uh, remarks um, and uh, welcome again. Your mic, turn your mic on. Is it on now? Yes, it is. Go ahead. Okay, thank you very much, Ambassador, for the opportunity. On behalf of my Ambassador, I would like to thank the um, organizers for inviting us to this event. Just uh, briefly, uh, um, Namibia is about half the size of Alaska and is situated in southern uh, southern coast of Africa. It borders Angola and Zambia in the north, South Africa in the south, and uh, Botswana in the east. Now, why do business in Namibia? Namibia, the country has functional institutions in place, a good legal framework that supports investors and a world-class financial system. There are excellent infrastructure, such as the Port of Walrus Bay and road networks around the country, so it will be easy to travel wherever you want in the country. You know, Namibia is a huge country. Now, I'm not going to talk about the mineral resources because Namibia is known largely for mineral resources, but I'm going to focus on specific uh, priority areas that the Namibian government is focusing on. Um, we are focusing on wind and solar energy generation, agriculture, water desalination, skills development, technology or ICT, we've, I think, all learned a lesson from the uh, pandemic that technology is key and we can no longer afford not prioritizing this um, sector. The health sector is also one of our priority areas that uh, we are focusing on, including the value chain along that. The creative industry is also another area that the government is prioritizing. Now, looking Namibia, now to um, resuscitate the economy from the pandemics, Namibia is looking at a public-private partnership strategy uh in terms of economic activities recovery and also in terms of uh, infrastructure development now there are seven projects that the government has identified and is seeking for uh, private sector um, investors to partner so that they can uh, develop those sectors or subsectors and the seven projects that have been identified by the government as a strategy to recover from the economic downturn includes the they are from the following areas water that is the reclamation or desalination renewable energy of course solar or wind uh, students accommodation is one of the um, capital projects that the government is also looking at, uh, seeking out investors to partner in. Uh, and agriculture, green scheme, we want to autom automate agricultural activities. Um, in terms of um, strengthening the relationship between America and uh, uh, Namibia business people, we always, um, um, uh, conduct missions, trade missions, organize trade missions in various sectors. Annually, we take trade people from uh, investors or trade um, interested business people from America to Namibia, where they are actually 
they teamed up or they are connected to prospective partners in Namibia or they are open up to opportunities of investment in Namibia. Um, I should mention that I mentioned that the government has identified seven projects that they will want to uh, implement based on public-private partnership. Now, there will be a conference on the 17th to, to on the 16th to the 17th of uh, of this month, where the government will be uh, will be presenting these projects to prospective investors. Um, in conclusion, I would like to invite everybody to visit Namibia, which is the jewel of Africa. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Madam Katrina. It's good, again, to see uh, everyone, um, and you in particular, um, and I'm glad you mentioned your trade mission. I'm going to now go to, um, uh, to Sudan and uh, with um, uh, Chairman uh, Asha Ashaba. Uh, Asharera, I don't know if I'm saying your name. I know your first name is Elsa Deeg. I hope I'm not crucifying your second name. Abashira is what I have on my notes. And so uh, Chairman Abashira, uh, please go ahead. You have about five minutes. Uh, your mic is muted. Chairman? Chairman Elsa Deeg Abashira from the Republic of Sudan. I see you, but I also know that your mic is muted. Can you hear me, Chairman Elsa Di Abashira? Hopefully he will be able to, to come back on. In the meantime, I'm just going to, hold on one second, please. It's like he's logging back in. But while he's doing that, you can think about this question, how do you best help Africa diaspora SMEs access the wonderful things that you talked about in your respective countries? Um, and so you can start thinking about that as a, as a question. Uh, and I'm going to, um, I still don't see uh, Chairman El Sadiq Abashira. So hopefully he will be able to come back on. Uh, in the meantime, um, I'm gonna start with uh, the two honorable ambassadors to address that. I think that all of the wonderful things that you mentioned are certainly great for US Africa, business and investment and trade relationship. But if you can drill down to how better help SMEs, all of the things that you mentioned, not only sort of going from here to the continent, but when they get there, is there a one-stop shopping just for them? Uh, and if there's not, is that something that you consider? And the second element of that is a broader scholarly point um, uh, that came up uh, a couple of years ago, that you that on the continent, there are really only four countries that have a standalone ministries for small businesses. They have a ministry called the Ministry of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises. A lot of times the focus for uh, SMEs is assumed under another ministry. So if you could tell us what ministry your, your SME um, initiatives are housed under, or if you're thinking about creating a standalone ministry just for SMEs. So kind of those buckets of things. I'm gonna start uh, first with the Honorable Ambassador from Sierra Leone. Uh, Ambassador Wong, can you sort of begin on that? And then Ambassador Asomba, I will turn to you. And when and if um, Chairman uh, El Sadiq Abashara comes back on, we'll jump over to him. Okay, Ambassador Wong, please go ahead. Your mic is on, sir. You're, you're muted, Ambassador Wong. You need to unmute your mic. Okay. There you go. Oh, th thank you so much, Ambassador Robin, uh, for really um, moderating this panel and giving us an opportunity to kind of share ideas. I, I, I always say, uh, and this is very, very important, some of us who have lived here, uh, you cannot do business by remote control. That just doesn't work. The strength of business is about creating relationships, eyeball to eyeball. Look at the, the program now that uh, this organization has put together. In our country, we have 
a an investment board <laughs> chaired co-chaired by the president and the vice president and we also have an organization there called sleeper so what we do see in practice i'm speaking practically when people come <laughs> to our offices and say Oh, they got a billion dollars to invest in the country. And I'm sure, Ambassador Sanders, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And then you begin the due diligence. 75% of the times, it doesn't pan out. I would rather have a small group of people who says, if I'm, if I'm going to do agriculture, you lay out exactly what is it that you want to do which ministries that we could be able to facilitate the ministry so that when you go home, before you get there, everything is set. But sometimes people go on their own because all kinds of people tell them they are gonna do this for them and it doesn't happen. So if you will come the first place of business and I'm sure uh, Ambassador, all the other uh, missions uh, uh, could, could, could be at the same witness, is to come to our embassies. We are the ones that the governments have appointed to be here. We could be helpful. We could tell you what is possible and what is not possible. So rather than you go, because a lot of times you don't get a chance to actually meet these people. They say, okay, well, you, they come, they'll give you a picture with the president, they'll give you a picture with the minister and nothing happens because it is not structured. So my position here as ambassador is to create effective, doable relationships with SMEs. Because let me tell you, in the United States, it's not the big businesses that uh, the big corporations that make uh, create run the economy, it's the small businesses. So I would be more interested with that, in, in sitting down with that small business and say, I wanna invest in agriculture, I wanna do this, I want to do that. And then we put a plan together. And I will be very happy to even lead that delegation because I'm on the ground. That's what our country wants. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Ambassador Wa. I'm going to, Ambassador Asoma, if you could give me one minute. I see the great honorable uh, Congressman uh, Evans there. And uh, I, I do want to turn to him uh, for his greetings and salutations. So. Congressman Evans, great to see you again. Welcome and over to you. Thank you. I really thank you. I just wanted to drop in. I, I apologize why I could not be involved earlier. But I just want to wish you the best. I applaud the beginning of the Doom Day celebration. And particularly as I heard some of the conversation relating to Africa and small businesses. I do agree that's very much a part. And I want to say to you that I thank you all uh, for what you do. I want to let you know I'm there and supportive of you. Thank you so very, very much, uh, uh, Congressman Evans. Uh, I know how active you are, uh, not only, of course, uh, from your state, but certainly on behalf of small businesses everywhere. And so that uh, I personally thank you for, and I know that our entire audience and, and panel Thank you for that leadership and that dedication, really keeping the eye on the ball for us. So thank you so very much and taking time out of your thank you for very heavy schedule. Stop yes, thank, thank you thank so you. much, sir. Thank you. Take care. Pastor Somba, I'm going to turn to you. Uh, same question. Uh, how do small businesses navigate, uh, you know, through, uh, the system that you outlined in your remarks, is there a separate uh, agency that, that they can engage with as a small business? You know, who do they meet with and engage with at your embassy, sort of like Ambassador uh, Wa outlined if you have something similar. So over to you, sir, for your response. Ambassador Somba, Cameroon, can you yeah. hear me? Yes, it's, yes, over to you. Yes, I hear you. Uh, so this will be my conclusion, is to say that I, I would like to 
to reiterate my uh, gratitude to the uh, organizer of this platform. It is a very important uh, um, uh, 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 tool for, for uh, Ambassador Cameroon to keep promoting uh, the Republic of Cameroon here in the United States. Cameroon is a, a very uh, important economic destination in Central Africa. It's the leading economy in the, in the, the that sub-region. It represents half of the total GDP produced in that sub-region. And uh, I view my uh, role here as uh, uh, the, uh, uh, sensitizing the uh, uh, business uh, community in the United States and the uh, diaspora to get them involved into the uh, uh, national construction in Cameroon. We have all the uh, incentives. Uh, uh, one can imagine uh, to facilitate the uh, business relationship to, uh, uh, with whoever would like to. And the country is rich uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, natural reserve uh, infrastructure. We have five, uh, five uh, uh, ports, a seaport. We have five of them. OK, I'm not sure who can hear me, but I have lost audio for everyone as well as video. I have logged both audio and video on my end. Um, Hi, yes. everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, now we're back. Yes. Okay. Um, Ambassador of Cameroon is not quite back yet. He may not know that uh, that we had a glitch there. Mm -hmm. uh, so well, I'm going to. I think he logged. I think he logged off. Uh, I'm going to turn to uh, um, Madam Miles and then uh, Madam Prerina uh, to go quickly. And if we get the ambassador back, then I will um, I will turn back to him. But go ahead, uh, Madam Mills. Um, so and, we, and keep it quite short if you can. Thank you. No problem. Yes, I will okay. keep it short. So um, just to answer your question, we do have uh, a ministry. Uh, a minister who's in charge of promotion and private investments for SMEs. So uh, this entity is only focused on, um, you know, helping and assisting SMEs and private investors who are in interested in coming to Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, just to bring you a quick highlight, uh, in the last Cross Para Africa edition, which took place in 2019, the, the, this minister actually came to Philadelphia to attend and encourage the Cross Para Africa initiative. Um, if you will allow me, I was also wanted, wanted to say uh, we do organize also trade mission every year um, where we organize meeting between ministers, decision makers and government officials. Um, investors can visit business and commercial centers to see how the business, business are conducted in every coast. And we also have networking events. Thank you so Thank much. You. Perfect, uh, Madam Mill. Uh, my dear friend, uh, Madam Padrina, please go ahead. Yes, um, we in Namibia we don't really have a dedicated ministry for trade uh, for SMEs, but the Ministry of Trade was um, upgraded, upscale to include SME development in the heading, which means that the portfolio of the SME. Um, activities was raised to a higher level now coming to your question on how we can foster the we can help the smes in the diaspora to benefit from some of the activities or some of the programs that we have outlined i think the first point of call is the embassy where we can now, from the embassy, we can now facilitate relationships 
business relationships and linkages between um, entrepreneurs in our respective countries and then the SMEs from the diaspora. And then we, as embassies or as missions, we can uh, facilitate to make sure that uh, what they are trying to do is actually uh, guided through the processes, both legally and otherwise, to make sure that uh, something tangible actually come out of their of what they are trying to do. Thank you. That's great, and it's great to know that you upgraded uh, where the SME portfolio. Uh, now is uh, in the country. I think that that's absolutely wonderful. Uh, with that, uh, I don't see that we have uh, the chairman of uh, of um, uh, the agricultural project in Sudan. I don't think we have Chairman Elsa Deek back. I don't see him, and still don't have the ambassador of Cameroon back. So, in the interest of time, I am going to turn the floor back over to our wonderful CEO and President of Adunde. Um, Madam Bumi and our wonderful uh, our chairman of the board of Adunde, uh, Stanley Strader, to uh, introduce Melvin Foote, who actually needs no introduction at all, but uh, to, to turn it to Melvin Foote for his, his summary uh, comments and any other closing remarks or political officials that may drop in between now and then to come in and say hello. So first, uh, thank you all panelists, uh, Ambassador Wa, uh, thank you so very much for your, your steep comments and your engagement and your commitment to the U.S.-Africa relationship. Uh, Madam Katrina, I, you know, I, I know where Namibia falls in my heart, so that's, that's not an issue. And I do agree with you that uh, everyone should go there, everyone should go to Sierra Leone. Uh, mm -hmm. Madam Mills, um, I was in a go, I mean, in Cote d'Ivoire for the Go Ministerial um, a year and a half ago. And so I know all the wonderful things that you were doing, and certainly that Cote d'Ivoire has had one of the highest uh, GDP in 2020 uh, for the region. And I think that that's a testament to your um, commitment in trade and investment. So thank you all uh, for your wonderful participation and over to our esteemed leadership, Madam Bumi and uh, Uncle Stan, as he's called there. And thank you so much for engaging with me as the moderator. It's been an absolute honor uh, for me to serve as the moderator today. Thank you very much, Ambassador. <clears throat> we want to thank you very much, Ambassador, for monitoring this and being a, a fantastic moderator. And that's how I know you I can see why you stayed in foreign service for so year. We, we appreciate you here and part, being part of the Philadelphia Posse. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I also want to uh, say to all of our guests that came in quickly, Congressman Evans, of course, our city council people and the Secretary of uh, Trade at the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Thank you very much for coming. As you heard from them, they're committed to our collaboration with Africa and the global African diaspora. And of course, uh, Bumi, and uh, Adunde, about 46 years. At the 46, she could do anything she want to do. Okay, <laughs> so we're gonna work. With, we're gonna work with her on that. Uh, finally, I just want to say for each of the countries, you know, Philadelphia with Cameroon ambassador, we have had a sister city relationship with between Philadelphia and Douala since 1985. So I've been there. That was my first visit there. We've worked with the OIC in Boa with Reverend the late Reverend Sullivan that we're working with. Of course, Sarah Leone, we have a long, large relationship with Sarah Leone. And many of the great founder leaders of that country went to university here in Philadelphia, Lincoln, and also uh, Cheney University. So, Ambassador, we're going to follow up with you on a Mono River project. I know there's something there, but we're going to have to educate our community here on how to make use of it, and we will be getting back with you on that. Uh, for Hokoki Wild, Miss Miles. I'm going to call Ambassador Cameron and tell him how wonderful you did. You were great. You were great. We might, we might give him a couple of days off when he gets back. <laughs> <laughs> but you're wonderful. And we appreciate you. And uh, you. we continue, you know, Cote d'Ivoire in Philadelphia, we did the Prosper Africa trade program here with over 300 small businesses here uh, two years ago. And we want to continue that work. And also, uh, your president went to both Drexel University and the University of Pennsylvania here wow. in Philadelphia. So we're, yeah. we're, we've been trying to get him here to come to be a commencement speaker at either Drexel or University of Pennsylvania. So we keep keep you posted on that. 
And then for Ms. Nikali for the Republic of Namibia, what can I say? Her prime minister went to Lincoln University. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we have a strong dynamic relationship with all of the countries here. And of course, uh, just you know, before COVID hit, we were able to discuss relationship with Namibians exporting beef to Philadelphia. So we still have to get back on that project. So let me just thank all of you and let everybody know we have a very dynamic relationship with these countries and they're here to discuss and follow up this activity. So as Ambassador Wade pointed out, we don't want to go waste your time. We want to be able to come with live projects and you can help us expedite us through this and we'll keep going. So without any further ado, I want to ask my good friend and brother, uh, Mr. Melvin P. Foote, the founder and president of the Constituency for Africa to do a closeout. God bless all of you. Thank you very much. Mel, are you here? Thank you. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, okay, Stan told me I got a half hour, so I'm going to cut it down. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Melvin, we need you to turn your volume up. Your volume, your volume is low. We can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Uh, a little guys. bit louder. <laughs> I think I'm about as loud as I can get. Okay, that's can good. That's good. Okay, let's start from there. Um, let me first of all acknowledge Booney uh, Fernandez West. Uh, it's great to see you. Um, I still miss your mom. I do. Yes. You know, I still miss her. Uh, yes. And also my brother uh, and chief, uh, Stan Strouder. Uh, I applaud the outstanding work that you all have continued to do uh, in building support for Africa and Philadelphia. Uh, you know, you're giants, you're, you're steadfast, and you need to be uh, acknowledged. I also want to acknowledge uh, Kuna Cook. Uh, she's a breath of fresh air, you know. And one thing I can say about the Biden administration, they have held uh, dear to their heart the issue of diversity. And there's a lot of brothers and sisters who are working in the administration at State Department and at USAID and across the government uh, who are doing, who are in key positions. And so I think um, these next four years is absolutely <laughs> crucial to Africa and to uh, issues that we're concerned with. Um, we really, uh, uh, we really need to, uh, the help of the U.S. government to educate Americans about Africa and to build a base of support for Africa in the United States. Americans are uneducated, undereducated, and miseducated about Africa. We need their help to build town hall meetings around the country like we used to do, uh, CFA in the early days, where we took African ambassadors around the country to make the case. Uh, we need to get them out of Washington. And COVID-19 has certainly locked us all down and nobody can go outside of their house. And so uh, as soon as possible, uh, we need to organize town hall meetings around the United States to educate and inform Americans and to engage uh, entrepreneurs in Kansas and Nebraska and Texas in California and around the country about uh, opportunities in their country. Uh, you only can go so far here in Washington, and really it goes in one ear and out the other ear. So I think we have to make the case uh, for Africa across the United States. Um, you know, I heard a lot about Yali, and you know, I'm the one who came up with Yali. I gave the idea to President Barack Obama. He asked me, what could he do to stimulate Africa or support Africa while he was rebuilding the U.S. economy, and I said, don't spend your time on these old guys in Africa. Spend your time on the young ones who are coming up, and I gave him a framework which became the Young African Leaders Initiative. Now, the, you know, the U.S. government always pushed black people away when we come up with stuff. That would happen with Crossroads Africa. The Peace Corps never would have existed if it wasn't for Crossroads Africa, but a black man was running the show there. Uh, we got to break the ice here. Now I look at Yali 10 years later. Sure, it's the greatest program in the history of the United States government. But I envision Yali is linking up African, young African leaders with young African American, other American leaders in the United States. Um, I want it to be a pan African thing, but I see it away from that. And like we deal with African youth uh, by themselves, this is supposed to be empowering both African youth and African-American and diaspora youth. So 10 years from now, we can really talk about Pan-Africanism. Let me also say something about Leon H. Sullivan, since I got the mic. Sullivan was a giant, you know? You guys need to really build a big, I know you got Africatown coming, but you also need to have a big statue of Leon H. Sullivan 
right downtown in City Hall. Uh, that's where it belongs. But Leon Sullivan, after we had this great discussion today, Leon Sullivan would have organized the airplane to take us to Africa to have the conversation on the ground that uh, Ambassador C. Dickey White talked about. You can't do it by remote control. You've got to actually be in these countries, sitting down with people, looking at the projects, looking at the potential. That's the only way we're going to do business in Africa. So uh, in the spirit of Leon H. Sullivan, Booney and, and, and Stan, you guys need to rethink about how we engage in getting people to be underground in Africa. But it's, a, it's been a wonderful conversation. Uh, you know, I, I'm really excited about uh, Africa. I'm continuing to do my part here in Washington. Uh, but we have a Robin, it's great to see you. You know, it's great to see you. We haven't talked in a while, but I know your heart has always been there. Always. Uh, you know, the sister Thank from Aubrey Coast, you know, come on, right on the mark. Uh, now, I know a lot about Namibia. Hagi Gango is my good friend, you know, <laughs> uh, my good friend. So, uh, really, we want Namibia to step up the, the act here in Washington. Uh, you know, it's a wonderful country, uh, wonderful people, wonderful opportunities, but we're going to need to, you know, uh, stop all, you know, we have to stop all being nice to each other and start holding each other accountable. You know, Thank you. I, I've been in this game for 40 years now, and I'm seeing to a certain extent we're at the same place we was 40 years ago. Wow. And if we don't change the paradigm, we're going to still be in the same place. And I'll tell you, others are taking Africa. They're ready to grab Africa. The Chinese, the, the, the Japanese, the Turks, everybody else is moving on Africa. And they're not moving just because they like African people. They're moving because they want oil and gas, cotan, uh, timber, fish. Uh, they want all the minerals that Africa has to offer. They don't want the African people. So uh, having said that, it's been a wonderful discussion. I certainly enjoy looking forward to coming to Philadelphia as soon as Stan will allow me, give me a visa so I could come to Philadelphia. <laughs> you know? You know? But uh, I'm ready to go. I just came for my first trip. I went home uh, to Illinois for my first trip outside of Washington in, a, in, a, in 18 months. And it was great. So I'm, for me, I'm vaccinated. I'm good to go. And I'm ready to come to Philadelphia. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you so much. I just want to uh, uh, President Bume and, and, and Mr. Stan, can we make sure that we get uh, everyone's um, uh, email, all the speakers' email addresses? Okay. Uh, you know, yeah. So that uh, we can do that. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Back to you. Okay. I just want to say thank you to everyone who was a part of this wonderful, wonderful platform roundtable today. Thank you to all the ambassadors. Thank you to our moderator. Thank you so much, Ambassador Sanders. Thank you to the ambassadors from Cameroon, Sierra Leone. Thank you from the representatives from Namibia and Côte d'Ivoire. Thank you so much to all our uh, federal and state dignitaries who attended and spoke to Mr. Rashid, the deputy, I mean, excuse me, the commissioner of Commerce here in Philadelphia. Thank you to everyone who took a part. We are so honored. Uh, Almost Stan joining our board about 20 years ago allowed us to open this whole international, uh, how can I say, platform for Odun Day, inviting all these ambassadors from Africa. Thank you to Mr. Melvin Foote so much for doing inclusion for us. Thank you to everyone. We look forward to being, tomorrow is going to be our Caribbean business roundtable. So we look forward to you joining us. Um, again, thank you, everyone. Thank you for supporting Odun Day. Next year, we'll be back in the streets. We look forward to seeing all you ambassadors and dignitaries there and join us for Odun Day in 2022. But for now, we'll see you tomorrow, tomorrow at 3 p.m. at our Caribbean Business Roundtable. Thank you, Uncle Stan. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you later. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 That was great.